Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to be making an 1850s bonnet to go along with the 1850s purple plaid silk project that I've been working on that is hiding behind me right now. It's actually finished, but you're not going to see that video until Tuesday. So do make sure that you are subscribed and you click the little bell icon so that you can be notified when that video goes live. And I'm going to try not to spoil it in this video by having it, you know, behind me. So the bonnet that I'm going to be making comes from Butterick 4210. It is this one right here. It works pretty well as the 1850s shaped bonnet that I need for this fashion plate right here. The one difference is that I do feel like this one gets a little pointy right down here. Let me show you what I mean because I've actually made this bonnet twice before. Once before I knew anything about making hats and that wound up turning into this bonnet made out of like single layer Joann's type buckram that just crushed itself basically. And so you have actually seen me wear this with a lot of other outfits like my velvet early bustle gown because I went and I took this bonnet and I turned it basically into like a hat that can sit on my head like this, a little more bustle appropriate because it got so crushed. But then I remade it a couple of years later once I knew a little bit more about hats with like good two layers of sturdy type buckram and that was this one right here which went with my blue and white 1860s sheer dress. Now I love this bonnet. I still am super proud of this. I think it's gorgeous uh, but it is obviously not going to match the purple project so that's why we need to make another one of these in purple with obviously different trimming and everything too to make it kind of match this fashion plate. Now we don't see very much of the bonnet in the fashion plate. Here's a little close up right here. So obviously we're just getting a little bit of the rim around, but this is what I meant by the like pointy part in the front. So I move my hair out of the way. You can kind of see right here where it just gets pointy and like long. And so I think I want to get rid of that and just have it come more in to make this a little bit more appropriate. So I am going to be altering this pattern just slightly and hopefully it won't be difficult or a big deal to do that alteration. The other question really is what I'm going to be making this out of because I want to make this out of the purple trim fabric that I've used for like all of the bows. But um, it, this is all I have left. That's it, just this, this little piece right here. So I definitely cannot make a drawn bonnet with this, which is what I have on here. When you see like all of this kind of ruched shirred fabric, this is a drawn bonnet. And I love, love, love the look of that but that takes way more fabric than I have, especially since it's like also gathered around the brim here, not just the crown. So we're gonna have to kind of experiment with the pattern layout and see, can I make it out of this at all? Do I need to run to Joann's? If I need to run to Joann's, do they have more of this fabric? Etc. Now I do have enough of the plaid silk that I could potentially just make the bonnet out of the plaid silk, but it's kind of like a, you know, larger plaid print here. And so I just feel like putting it on something as small scale as the bonnet is, it's going to be like too much. It's going to overwhelm the bonnet and it's going to be incredibly matchy matchy to the point where it would be difficult to wear this with, you know, potentially another outfit down the line. I do like to make headwear that is versatile that can be worn with multiple outfits. So that is why I would much prefer to make it out of like a solid like this than this plaid. So yeah, let's go ahead, pull out the pattern pieces and talk about how I'm going to be making that alteration to the pattern piece and see if it fits on my purple fabric or if I will be running to Joann's. So although the shapes in this pattern do a pretty decent job of achieving the like right bonnet shapes, this pattern honestly makes no sense at all. So we are just completely getting rid of the instructions there. The other thing that we're going to get rid of is the fact that for some reason there are two very, very different shaped brims for this pattern and it makes no sense. You don't need that. So yeah, we're getting rid of this weird narrow one. I don't know why it exists but it goes with the weird instructions and we're just going to use the pattern piece nine for the brim. Now I had written some notes on here last time, like minus 0.5 piece eight, which piece eight is the piece we just got rid of. 
and um, I'm not sure why I wrote them. I can't figure out why. So we're actually just going to go with this shape, except that I've drawn in over here my new point or kind of lack of point. So I'm actually curving in this edge right here and then I'm shortening it as well. And so that should make it so the bottom of the bonnet is not as pointy and it will leave the rest as is. So this gets cut out in the buckram. This, well, actually it's technically this one gets cut out in the the buckram and then there's the top to the crown somewhere that gets cut out in the buckram as well. For my buckram I always do two layer buckram and I zigzag the edges together. I'll show you that once it's done and you press it together and that makes it more stiff. Not all buckram will fuse but if you find the stuff that can you can literally use it for cutting too so that you can fuse the one piece you've already cut on top of the piece that you're about to cut making it a lot easier to cut. Of course, always make sure that you cut buckram with craft scissors and not with fabric scissors. Once you've done a basic fusing on something that's going to be rounded, like the brim of the hat or the crown, you can also Use it on a curve to build a little curve into it. That way you won't get bubbles when you actually go to put it together. So now what I've done is I've added stitch lines around all of this. Hopefully you can see, but there is a little stitch line towards the edge. And then there's also just like a zigzag of stitch lines that I've done throughout the middle to really keep this together because the fuse is not like a permanent type thing. And then over here, I've also added the millinery wire to the edges. So on this brim piece, it goes right along the edges down here at the end and all the way around the outside. And then it just goes in a little bit on this one right here. The reason that this is done is just so you don't get like a pointy bit right here. It just kind of comes in a little bit. You probably don't even need that much. And then I also have done it to the top here. I'm a little worried that I set it a little too far out because I meant to set it five eighths of an inch from the edge. I set it half an inch. So hopefully this will fit because this is now going to get crinolated. Well, really, when we put it together, we're going to put it together with fabric and stuff too. But basically the edges are going to get little slashes cut in them and then it's going to like fold over the wire like that and then the crown piece will wind up going around it and it will go into the back of the crown piece right there so that is what we'll do next as we put this all together so although I did actually go to Joanne's today to get more of the purple fabric back there when I got home I got it into my head that like wouldn't it be cool if the bonnet was velvet because this still perfectly matches the dress and it's such a weird kind of like I think it's one plus yard of velvet. And it's like, hmm, that might be really nice as like a drawn bonnet. So I've just kind of done a test here to play with the drawing portion. So basically I first I ripped this on the grain. So this edge is totally on the grain, just flat. And then I did two rows of gathers there, skipped four inches and did another two rows of gathers here. And I think I like it. I should have marked the center, but I didn't. So I might just have to kind of eyeball unless I want to completely undo the gathering. By the way, the gathers did some weird tension things on here, which I think is just a matter of it being velvet. Now that I've pulled it up, it looks less weird, but it was so loose of tension. It was like I'm fine on my machine. Um, so yeah, that was a little bit weird, but I do kind of feel like I like that. This is this would be the outer portion of the brim and then the inner portion would be something else just filled with lace. And then this will also be the crown or will be eventually, but I'm just doing a test right now. But yeah, I just, I like this plush. I feel like that would look really pretty in a bonnet. So I think it looks pretty nice. This pulled up section here. This is the full width of the fabric all the way around. Obviously it winds up being less gathered on the outer edge of the brim than it does on the inner edge of the brim. But yeah, I think that is pretty. So I think what I'm going to do is probably just like 
hot glue the edges in place and then cut off the excess over here. If I had known that this would have worked like full stop, I probably would have just ripped the green again up here. But since I didn't, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm probably going to hot glue this side here and then like anchor this edge down and then just pull it taut to hot glue and cut off the excess as I go. So as you can see, I have glued all of the shirred layer of the brim onto the buckram now on that side. The other side will be lining when I go to put it together. And now what I've done is I've run gathering stitches here for about six and a half inches wide on the crown. This will be the crown piece. And again, like I haven't cut it off from the rest of the fabric yet. I will do that after I glue it on. So I'm going to pull all of these up now and then these will get attached to the crown piece underneath here. With the crown piece, you wind up needing half inch extra on each side to go around the sides uh, so that you don't get, you know, weird edges showing like this. So this piece does have to be a little bit larger than this piece. So this is how I am gluing everything in place. I have my brain squiggle fabric here all pulled up. And then on the inside, I'm just folding over a little bit. First, I'd marked the centers and I glued a spot in the centers here on the outside. And then on the inside, I'm just folding over about half an inch and just like pressing it into place in the glue. I'm going to do that all the way around here. Then I think for this top part, I'm going to have to like figure out where to cut off the excess so that I can fold it over because I feel like cutting it off after might be a little bit complicated just with all this extra fabric on there. So yeah, everything is going on like that. I'm trying not to put glue like here because you can actually, like it makes it a little shiny. It hides pretty well in all of these folds, but I don't really want glue on this side here, the exterior side, just in case it winds up making any shiny spots. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm a little worried that this is quite thick because it is gathered velvet, but hopefully it will work out okay. So this portion of the crown is now done. It's all wrapped. But as I kind of expected, it is now too small around here for this. I think it's a combination of A, the wire really is a little bit wider than it should have been, like wider out on the circle, and B, this is now super, super thick around this outside. So I am going to have to adjust the wire here. Honestly, I don't know 100% that I need the wire, so it's possible that I could always just take it out because it's pretty like hefty, I think even as is. But yeah, with the wire, it's definitely not going to work. I have to cut this circle smaller. This is much better. So I actually went and I undid part of the ring and then I stitched some stitches on by hand. They're purple. I can't even see them. There they are. There's the hand stitches. And just kind of whipping them and grabbing just the buckram. And now I have fit that in. Now I'm going to glue around the inside and I'm going to do little hand stitches around the outside to secure the back of the crown onto the bonnet. So I've just gone and glued on the brim to the rest of the crown. Unfortunately, it had a glue accident and it like slid glue all over right here while I was putting it together, which is really annoying. I wasn't planning on adding any sort of like band to this. Like for example, on my blue bonnet, I have this trim band, which I mean, it's cute, but because of the velvet, because it looks so nice, I wasn't planning on doing that. So. What this glue accident means is either I have to add a band, uh, which really is more on like the brim than on the crown, because that's where the glue is, it's on the brim, or I have to add some sort of like decoration, floral, lace, something, you know, some maybe fake flowers, I don't know. Yeah, I have to figure something out for putting there. And other than that, now it is time to do the lining and then the binding of this outer edge right here. And that will be it. I did sew this, by the way. I don't think you can really see any of the hand stitches, but it is hand sewn all the way around there. So that's what it looks like from the inside currently and the side. I do really, really like the shirt look of it. I think it's very nice and just the velvet in general looks really great. So yeah, maybe I suppose I could add just like a little band of the fringe trim, the dark purple fringe trim. That might look pretty and might tie it in with the dress. So I'll see what that looks like. 
All of the lining pieces are now at least partially in. This bottom one, like the top of the crown, that is glued in and then I glue around this edge right here. But then here I'm going to hand sew this. There's glue around this edge as well. But yeah, this connection is hand sewn just because I feel like you can't really glue this neatly without getting glue all over everything. And then I've decided to do this velvet ribbon for the binding. So it's a really nice match to like the deep deeper plum color here and I had like a full spool of it so it can also hang down and yeah I'm gonna sew this on by hand both sides and then I also really like these sort of plum flowers that I have I feel like they're both like autumnal but also still florally whatever I do want to find some other sort of trimming maybe like down here and the inside of this is going to have lace which the lace is going to be glued on but I still prefer to do this bit by hand so yeah I've got to do a lot of hand sewing and then I will get back to doing the decorating. All of the hand stitching is now done. You can see how nice everything looks and I've also sewn on the flowers here. I kind of glued them to each other and then sewed them on so you can see like I wrapped them down here but they're just sewn on with some thread. So now it is time to put the lace on over here and decide if it wants any additional trimming. The bonnet is very nearly done. I have added kind of like one and a half rows of lace. So there is the full row of lace around and then there's a second one that just goes right here, right behind my head because there was a little too much brim to fill out for the one piece of lace. And that is really the only trimming that I've done besides the flower and the contrast binding. Now that said, there is one more step that I need to make on this, which I was kind of hoping that I could forego because I don't like the idea of having to hem like a narrow hem on velvet and I tried to make it you know potentially out of a different fabric but basically every bonnet from this era as far as I can tell has a little piece of fabric that is just like a little ruffle right here and it kind of hides the back of the neck so like when the bonnet is on it would be right back here kind of hiding the hair I guess too and uh, it's called the skirt in this pattern and yeah I was really hoping to avoid doing it. I mean it looks very pretty on this one right here. This is the little skirt right here. So this one I pleated it in the pattern it says to gather it and again it's very pretty but I just didn't want to work more with the velvet. <laughs> And I'm going to have to. So I am going to cut that out tomorrow. But once I sew that on, which that I'm certainly going to, well, I'm going to try gluing it, but it's probably going to be sewn on by hand. And that will be it for this bonnet. And I'll show you what the finished look looks like. So this is the skirt piece right here. This is the inside of it. And down here at the bottom, I've turned a narrow hem and sewn that by hand. Up here at the top, I turned slightly wider, but I've only turned it once, whereas this is turned twice. And then I just ran gathering stitches over the top. You can see though what I mean by that weird tension issue of what the gathering stitches are doing on the velvet. It seems like once I pull the stitches up, that issue goes away. So hopefully that will be the same here. So now I'm going to pull these up and figure out how to attach this to the bonnet. And here it is with the skirt attached to the back of the bonnet. I wound up sewing it on by hand so you do see a few stitches like on the inside in here but not a big deal and I think it looks very very pretty in the velvet. So I keep going back and forth on whether this bonnet is actually done because if you look at the fashion plate here you will notice that there are some differences between what I have and the fashion plate. For one thing I'm really glad that I shortened the points even just a little bit because clearly this should have been shortened even more like it's still practically hitting my shoulders. I don't have the hair actually done which will fill it out a little bit kind of lift it up to here but yeah it's still very pointy. So if you make this pattern be sure to shorten the points at least a little bit because it's kind of ridiculous. Um, also she has decoration like right here. I can't tell what kind of decoration that is whether that is maybe flowers or feathers or something ruffly that sticks out down down here and maybe here it's hard to tell and then also the ribbon is kind of the biggest thing hers has really really wide ribbon that ties in a bow underneath the neck and I don't find that flattering at all like whenever I have ties on a bonnet 
I never tie them. You will have seen that like with the kitten ear bonnet that I made for the natural form bustle several months ago. I just never like tying those bows because I feel like it really cuts off my face and like chokes me and you know all of that sort of stuff. So I keep going back and forth on whether or not I want to add bows like that instead of this narrow velvet ribbon here because I mean I could make it out of the purple fabric that I got at Joann's. This is all that I've left of the original purple fabric so that's the thing like I could return the stuff that I bought a couple days ago and get my seven bucks back or I could attempt to make bows out of it because I do not have wide ribbon in this color and I don't remember seeing anything at Joann's that was ribbon in this color which is why I made it out of this in the first place. So yeah, I'm not sure. And then the other part is that she does have a little bit of like the blue color here right around her head. I thought about adding in maybe some of like the fringe trim up there, but it just, I don't love the look of it. So I'm kind of thinking to leave it as is up there. And it's really just the bows that I'm going back and forth on, on whether or not to add stuff there. I used to have these little like purple feathery bits. I don't think I have any more of them, but if I find the purple feathery bits, I might add that right here as a little sprig to kind of like counterbalance the flowers on this side. I might do that. So we'll see if I decide to add anything else to this bonnet. So I have added in purple up here and I really hate it. It just looks like weird hairs. So that's going to get taken out. I have also pinned on some of the same flowers from over here on this side, which is where it looks like in the fashion plate. I don't know that I love it. So I think I might put this on an Instagram poll. The thing is that the results of the poll won't come in in time for this video. So you won't see in this video if I chose to add these flowers or not. Uh, you'll have to wait for the final reveal video that will be on Tuesday. So make sure you come back for that. And then I'm still waffling on the ribbon. I am definitely leaning towards yes to the ribbon. But if I do the ribbon, I have this piece that is actually from the centers of the bows on the bodice. And you'll see like with the hems on each side, it just looks really bad. And then I would see like the underside and that's not going to work. So that would mean that I would need to do like total tube type ribbons. And I feel like since this is polyester, it is not going to look nice to do that. And of course I won't know until after I cut into that fabric that I then can't return um, if I'm gonna do it. But like these bows are just kind of a little sad looking. Um, I suppose I would then though have two cuts of the purple velvet ribbon, which would kind of suck. I don't know, like <laughs> I wouldn't have continuous because I already used it obviously for the binding. So that would be kind of annoying. So I don't know if I should just keep with these or if I should try to do the wide bows. I like the look of the wide bows, but I just feel like I'm not going to have achieved it right without it being actual ribbon, having it made out of polyester matte satin. I don't know that that's going to work. So I decided I would do a quick test piece with the fabric that I had from before, like not the new purchase piece, and just see what it would look like, you know, pressed into a tube. So this is that, it's not as wide as it should be by I think like about half an inch or something like that, but it is pretty close. It didn't press extremely flat, but I think it's good enough that I do want to use it as like the ribbon. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead, cut into the new fabric and make some ribbons out of the new fabric. All right. The ribbons have been added. So now I can tie this in a wonderfully unflattering bow under my chin. I have actually also decided not to do these flowers right here. So I'm just going with the flowers up here and no other decoration on the bonnet. So it looks like this. And I am very happy with how it turned out. And I can't wait to show you guys the full finished outfit that is still hiding behind me. And hopefully I have not exposed to you within this video. So do make sure that you are subscribed so that you know when the next video goes live to see the finishing of the full outfit that is hiding behind me. If you liked this video though, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And like I mentioned, if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other random costuming content like this out on Saturday 
Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Mirage. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!